uh, answer questions when the questions are being asked and uh, should be able to uh, answer diligently. And without much ado, we all, I want us to be able to contribute into this because uh, what I want us to do is to look at various uh, various things that people say. And when they say it, usually uh, we look at things that we, which we pray with. So that's the uh, we have been taught in those days to pray as if we are making incantation. Uh, and, uh, you know, so we have so many verses in the scripture which we use. And I want us to open to <laughs> Philippians chapter 4 and verse 13. All right, uh, let, let, me, let, me, let me throw it to Sister Ellie. Sister Faith, be ready, I'm coming to you. Sister Ellie, what will you say about that, please? What do you think Paul was saying there? Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. Well, what I always think Paul was saying about this thing. That uh, whatever he is, whatever preaching or anything that he's doing on his own, he's nothing. That uh, is true Christ alone. That anything that he's doing, we cannot boast of doing it. But that Christ that is doing it through him. It's not that uh, I want to boast that uh, I can I can become a millionaire, but uh, I can do that. But that whatever you see me do, it is only by the power of Christ that is in me. That's the way that I see it. Okay, amen. All right. You see, um, for everybody now, because I don't want us to be pulling it. Context when you want to read the scripture, you see the Bible, those people who wrote it originally, they didn't put chapter, neither did they, do they put verses. But chapter and verses were put there so that we can reference it. So not any single verse stood alone. Not any single verse stood alone. So, for us to be able to understand this, we will pick, uh, Brother Olu, brother, we read from me, from uh, verse t- 10. But I rejoice in the Lord, greatly that now, at last, your care for me has flourished again, through you surely. Though you surely did care. Though you, you surely lack, did care. Yes. Go on, sir. Good care, but you lack opportunity. Not that I speak in regard to needs, for I have learned in whatever state I am to be content. I I know how to be abased, and how I, I know how to ask to abound everywhere. And in all things, I have learned both to be full and to be hungry, both to abound and to suffer need. I can do all things through Christ who sent me. So what Paul was saying there was thanking them for the gift. You look at verse 10, say rejoice that at last you care for me. Not that you didn't care before you care, but I should tell you that regarding this, I've learned, I've learned how to <laughs> how to be poor and how to be rich. That is how to have and how to not to have. And in this regard, I've learned, and this is, I can do all things. This is what he's trying to say. He's writing a letter to them, to them that to tell them that I can look at verse twelve really, uh, or verse eleven. Not that I speak in regards of need; that is, to, regard to need. I'm not talking about regard to need that you should give me something. For I have learned in whatever state I am. To be content. That's the that's the key. To be content, he has learned, and that is what Christ has given to him. Uh, to him, 
And I said, I know how to abase, and that is not having at all. Everywhere and in everything, I learned both to be full, to be hungry, both to abound, and to suffer need. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. So saying that, so Sister Yale was uh, trying to say that, yes, whatever he does, yeah, uh, after you get the full meaning of this, then you can go to that application. That you got the full meaning of what he is saying there. That he was talking of the way that the Philippians give him things that they care for him. And he was saying that really that caring is not that he's uh, looking for it. Because he has learned how to have and not to have. Therefore, I can do all things. And uh, 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 if you look at 14, said, nevertheless, you have done well that you share in my distress. So it's telling them that, thank you so much for what you have done. Though in my position, in my, you know, I can do all things. It is Christ that strengthens me to do that. So that's the real meaning. And what Sister Yele uh, said, yes, yes, that's an application. Yes, I don't know if anybody has any question regarding that before we fly somewhere else. Anybody wants to? The next question will be to Sister Faith. Oh, okay. Yes, sir. Yes, I, I think uh, I think what uh, what Paul was saying, which is we are familiar with what he's saying, is that we we are we have contentment. Yes, uh, Christ Christ has given us contentment. We are not grasping. Uh, we are not grasping. Okay, uh, Bill Gates has a uh, 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 nine hundred billion. And uh, we were born the same year. Therefore, uh, you know, I'm not very happy at all. Uh, all those kind of nonsense. Uh, whether whatever we get had, me, I have Christ. And Christ has given me so much contentment. I'm so happy. Uh, so, the, 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 I, think, I think contentment is... Uh, we, which I think should be part of the fruit of the spirit, really. That, that's yes. one thing that uh, that's one thing that I know that Christians have. We are comfortable as uh, as they will put it in some literature books. We are, we are comfortable in our skins. Uh, uh, whatever God brings is always good. Uh, in our own case, our God is good. Our own God is good. We. It's not that it's not that we are lazy. We do everything when we have work to do. We do it with all our energy, with all our strength. Yeah. If we if we are rich, it's okay. We do not worship uh, the money. And if uh, if we do not have enough, uh, we we rather take it to God. We our hope, our everything is God. I think that's uh, that's one other thing we can one other way we can which I think is the Christian way to sure. life. Yeah. We are we are jealous of nobody. <laughs> uh, no. we, we, you know we are jealous of none. There's uh, there's nothing anybody will have that will make a Christian to be jealous. In actual fact, we are even proud that we have Christ, which uh, we ask, uh, which we know everybody should be jealous about. Yes, that's the uh, ultimate, you, that we have Christ. Yes, yeah, we have Christ. So every That's the ultimate, we have Christ. Once we have Christ, uh, wherever we find ourselves, and you, you know, you know, generally speaking, Christianity, they have history. Christianity has, has history of true Christians singing, singing to the stakes. Oh, yeah. Over, over the, yes, over the millennia. They, in fact, somebody said that Christianity, Thrives on persecution. Oh, sure. Uh, it, 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 it's, it's a little ironic. It's a little ironic uh, that, generally speaking, when you meet true Christians, when you meet true Christians, as uh, as uh, Paul wrote in the Romans chapter eight, uh, persecution, uh, uh, persecution, distresses, uh, hunger, uh, and yeah. even and even affluence. 
will not be enough. Will not be enough to take them from the love of Christ, love of God, yeah. from the love of God, which, which is in Christ. Uh, if we, if uh, for whatever reason, I make a, I make a hundred million tomorrow, it does not. Uh, it will not change the amount of the food I eat, and so on and so forth. I, we just thank God for that. I think that's one thing that. Uh, yeah. We, yeah. Yeah. I want to uh, to tell us again because uh, we, we have talked severally. We have not even re uh, reference uh, scripture. Yes, you reference scripture. You reference uh, Romans eight thirty five thirty seven thirty nine. We are we are Paul. Simple, so they say, what, what shall separate us from the love of God, which is ultimate. And if you look at the litany of things that followed it, to us, human beings, they are not pleasant things. To us. He said, shall he be dead? Famine? I mean, which one is pleasant to us? None of them. He said, he said but all those things do not separate us from the love of God. And what uh, Edda just uh, told us is that the the, is it lacking and abase? I mean, abase and abound in terms of this world. Has no meaning. To, should it not have meaning to any Christian? What should have meaning to Christian is that you have Christ, who is all in all for us. And uh, he spoke about uh, suffering. That is, the the, the Christian Christianity tribe in uh, persecution and. If you look at the apostles, even as early as uh, Acts chapter 4, Acts chapter 4, when uh, they let go Peter and John, and they went to the, uh, to the congregation, from verse 4 of uh, Acts chapter 4, uh, verse 24, so, so when they add that, when they add that, they raised up their four voice, you know, okay, 23, and being let go, they went to their own companion and reported all the, all the chief priests and the elder as said to them. Of course, what they told them is that they must not preach in the name of Christ. And uh, they said, who do we obey? Do we obey you or we obey God? So, in verse 24, so when they heard that, they raised their voice to God with one accord and said, Lord, you are humble. Uh, you are God who made heaven and earth and all the sea and all in it. Who by your mouth, uh, by uh, the mouth of your servant David, has said, Why did the nation rage? And the people plot things. The kings of the earth took their stand, and the rulers were gathered together against, uh, together against the Lord and his, uh, against his Christ. For truly, uh, uh, okay, let me go it though. For truly against your holy servant Jesus, whom you have anointed, both Herod and Pont Pontius Pilate, with the Gentiles and the People of Israel were gathered together to do whatever your hands are proposed, determined to be, be uh, before to be done. Now, Lord, look at their threats. They are now saying, you see, they are threats. These people, you see what they have. Look at their threats and grant to yourself, servant, to your servant, that with all boldness they may speak your word by stretching out your hand to heal that. And that the sign and wonder may be done through the name of your holy servant Jesus. Uh, that's not that's not really what I was looking for, really. What I was looking for, anyway, that's persecution. What I was looking for was that they were happy that they were persecuted for the name of Christ. They were very happy that they were persecuted for the name of Christ. And let me tell you, if you have Christ, you have everything. Have everything okay, uh, Sister Faith? Are you there? Yes, I'm there. Yes, good evening. Uh, uh, good evening, my dear. Yeah, I've got a question for you, mm -hmm. and that question is in uh, Isaiah 45. I like Isaiah 45 so much. Verse 1. What do you think is happening there? Uh, Isaiah 45. Okay, it says. Uh, 
and uh, it says that verse one. Yes, verse one. Okay, it says that says the Lord to His anointed to to Cyprus, whose right hand I have grasped, to subdue nations before Him, and to loose the belts of kings, to open doors before Him. The gates may not be closed. Should I go on? No. Uh, okay. Uh, yes. Go on. Go on. Go on. Go on up. Up okay. to. Up to three. I will go before you and levels, and level the, the exalted places. I will break in pieces the doors of bronze and cut through the bars of iron. I will give you the treasures of darkness and the hordes in secret places that you may know that it is I, the Lord, the God of Israel, who call you by your name. Okay. So what do you think is happening there? Okay, so I think um, this is the Lord speaking to, Cy to Cyrus. Cyrus was, um, he was a king during, I forgot w when exactly, but he was, he was um, a heathen. He wasn't saving the Lord, but I remember, I think, when they were coming from Babylon back to Jerusalem, the Lord spoke to him or something like that. Um, but the Lord was speaking to Cyrus in this verse, and he is saying that, um, oh, oh, the Bible says he's anointed, okay. But I know that he wasn't an Israelite. To his anointed, whose right hand have I grasped to subdue? Okay, so the Lord used him, even though he wasn't. Uh, the Lord anointed Cyrus, the king, to do his work, um, to subdue nations before him, so that he could lose the belts of the kings. Yeah. So, mm. in other words, I think the Lord used Cyrus to do the work that he wanted him to do. If I remember well, um, I think yeah, it was when people were going back. The movement from Babylon to Jerusalem, yeah. if I'm not mistaken. Okay, thank you. That's from uh, South Africa. Uh, as you go to Mara Modesty, uh, what, what we, can you make of that uh, of that Isaiah 45? Good evening, uh, Pastor. Good evening. Yes. So, for me, about uh, Isaiah 45. Uh, from one to three, right? Yeah, okay. So, so for me, uh, uh, it is uh, the promise of God to uh, the uh, the king of the nation uh, that we call Sirius. Sirius is uh, calling here the anointed. So God is promised uh, to him that he will, he will be victorious. He will overcome all is all the barrier uh, uh, before him and he will be uh, triumphal, he will, will free triumph in every battle of uh, uh, his life. That is the promise of God. I will understand here for him. Um, thank you very, thank you so much. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, who has used it to pray before? So, uh, who has to ever, pray? Yes, to put your name in it. You put your name in it. Ah, oh, okay, okay, <laughs> okay. So, <laughs> yeah, yes, yes, uh, yes. I will use this uh, pass, uh, this quotation to to pray. Uh, when when I, when when I put in my name, it. Uh, uh, yes, yeah, I'm <laughs> Yes, I'm Cyrus. <laughs> okay. okay. Uh, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Uh, for the two of you, you have said you have said exactly what it was. Actually, this was a prophecy about 200 years before it happened. In fact, when Isaiah was there, uh, it was uh, this prophecy was shortly after. Uh, um, um, I think during the time of Hezekiah, when this prophecy came uh, came out, but the thing was not going to happen for the next 200 years, uh, and that was what really happened. In the uh, can, can uh, yes, Sister Faith, can you read mm -hmm. extra chapter one? 
Isaiah, sorry. Extra, extra. Chapter Ezra, one. okay. Just read on. Ezra, sub. We we'll go back to that Isaiah, but let's. Yeah. Yeah. Extra. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> Let me use my phone. My Bible is taking too long. All right. <laughs> um. So it's Ezra. Chapter. Just read it from verse one. Okay. In the first year of Cyrus, king of Persia, that the word of the Lord by the mouth of Jeremiah might be fulfilled. The Lord stirred up the spirit of Cyrus, king of Persia, so that he made a proclamation throughout all his kingdom and also put, put it in writing. Thus says Cyrus, king of Persia, the Lord, the God of heaven, has given me all the kingdoms of the earth, and he has charged me to build him a house at Jerusalem, which is in Judah. Whoever is among you of all his people may his God be with him and let him go up to Jerusalem, which is in Judah, and rebuild the house of the Lord, the God of Israel. He is the God who is in Jerusalem. And let each survivor in whatever place he sojourns be assisted by the men of his place with silver and gold, with goods and with best, besides free will offerings for the house of God that is in Jerusalem. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Um, I need somebody. You see, what I'm trying to bring out is that what God has promised, because uh, Sister Pet was very, very right. What God has promised. So uh, he has promised it. He has said it through the mouth of the uh, prophet. Yes. The passion and the uh, beat, they conquered, you see. It was the one that he was referring to. They, 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 they actually conquered uh, the Babylonian. They conquered the Babylonia. So all the prophecy that was said there, that we lose the pound and everything, mm. they, they happened exactly as God has said it. And when uh, uh, you will find out that if you read the book of Daniel, after chapter 5, the next thing you see in Daniel is when they have arrived in the uh, 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 in Persia, not that they have arrived, the Persian conquered the whole land where the Babylonian had. So the the the, the Persians they uh, conquered the Babylonian, and so there was no more Babylon uh, Babylonian Empire. So it was Persia and Mid. Yeah, they made their dead. So, and the first king, the second, it wasn't even the first king. It was about the third king that this Cyrus is. There was Cyrus the Great, that, that this Cyrus. So what really happened is that this was the Cyrus that was being prophesied by name. Mm, in Isaiah. Actu actually, in uh, Isaiah and in uh, Jeremiah 25. So he did that. And Extra was now reporting it as it is. When the 70 years, you know, in Isaiah 20, in Jeremiah 29, when the 70 years uh, uh, came to be, you know, Daniel was praying, but it was not Daniel's prayer that uh, brought that because God had already promised that 70 years. But at that particular time, in that time of Ezra, that was when uh, Cyrus now rose up. So it was a promise of God of what was going to happen, which has occurred. There are so many promises of God that is in the Bible. Some have happened as it is, some are yet to be fulfilled. But this one was fulfilled that it was going to be the one to return. So the, the part that uh, my sister read was in the conquest conquest of uh, Babylon. If we read that Isaiah 45 down, we will see how he said that he was going to use it. He was going to use that man for the uh, for Israel. 
and that was what happened there. So if anybody asks you to take that one and start praying with it, uh, the, what the Bible there for us, it's not like uh, uh, incantation. It is for us to learn. We, we read when we know the situation, then we can not appropriate it. But if you don't know the situation, you can suddenly be appropriating it to yourself. So you have to be very careful. You will see that in every of these things that we have been doing, we have been trying to see the context of what uh, uh, the, the Bible was. What was the context? What are the contexts of that scripture? So don't take one verse, don't take two verse, don't let anybody uh, uh, bewitch you by using one verse or two verses and then start capitalizing on it. You need to know the context of what that thing is saying uh, before you do that. And that is very important. Uh, Elder, do you want to say something? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Um, <clears throat> I just want to re-emphasize re uh, some of the details that, that has come out from this particular passage. What we, what we read in uh, Isaiah 45, even though Isaiah 45 is after Estra, yes. Isaiah 45 actually preceded Estra. Yeah. It, it, it was before Estra. It was hundreds of years before Estra. 200, really. <laughs> so, yes, before Estra. And uh, the same thing for Jeremiah. Jeremiah is before Estra. Yes. At least when you when you were reading the book of Ezra, you saw where the writer was saying, so that the word of God from the, the mouth of uh, Jeremiah yeah. might be fulfilled. Because Jeremiah had prophesied what was going to happen after 70 years mm -hmm. of exile. You see, there's one thing that I want to I want to remind us about and that is that our own god is the only god that tells of the future long before it comes to pass prophecy prophecy is one of one of the main thing that authenticates god that speaks through the bible the authenticity of prophecy is what authenticates that we are actually serving the true God. That is the main thing. That is the main thing that confirms to Christians that the person that is their God is actually the God of the universe. Mm -hmm. You see, I, I, I want us to, each of us to think about projecting what will be Let's say in 20 years' time, if you can. Try, try and see if you can project so that you name, you name the name, you give us the name of the Prime Minister of Britain, <laughs> the President of the US, the President of, the, of Nigeria in another 20 years. Try and see if you can do it. No, just 20 years. No, we are not talking of 200. We, are, we don't multiply it by 10 yet. Can, 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 we, can, can we do three or can we do four? We can't. We cannot even do one year, basically. You can't. We, we can't do one year. It's not within the power of man to say, uh, well, many of you, many of us uh, are adults. Uh, we could remember the, the Monday, I think it was a Monday, the Sunday, the Sunday that... Uh, that Arafat came to Nigeria, the, the, oh, the yeah. former president of, of uh, uh, Palestine. Mm -hmm. the, yes, the former Palestine. Uh, uh, yes, the, the, the Sunday that he came to Nigeria, and you remember the person escorting him to the to the airport. Yes, yeah, so Abacha. I hope uh, uh, those of us who are a little maybe we will remember that day, that that particular scenario that I'm talking about. Around 11 a.m. on the following Monday, me, I was in Kaduna at that time. It was dead. Uh, rumors started coming. 
uh, in Kaduna that the host of uh, Yasser Arafat was dead. The whole, in fact, it, it was as if everybody was dead. So you, you can't, you can't, they, they even said that it was uh, some people that the, the government was trying to put the feet of people so as yes. to see who to arrest. Yeah. That, uh, that was why they were spreading the rumor that uh, Abacha was dead. So, so for, for, for about two or three hours, nobody was uh, showing any, any, whatever, any reaction. Because you don't know whether they, they, they are looking for who to arrest next or who to kill. <laughs> and that's why they are saying that uh, Abacha, Abacha, Abacha died. Is, uh, Abacha that we also saw yesterday on the, on, on the TV at the airport. So, the, the fact that our own God can tell us that this is what is going to happen. And the other thing I want to tell, I want to remind each of us is that it's only the God of the Bible. It's only in the books of the Bible, of the God of the Bible, that you see prophecy. You do not see prophecy. Uh, some people will tell you that what of the, 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 the Nostradamus? Ah. Nostradamus is a, is a, was a statistician, basically, was a mathematician. And that is that is why we have confidence. That is why we have confidence that we are not just like Peter said. We are not following um, devices, cunningly, cleverly devices. Yes. Yes. Cunningly, you think that we form in our minds. Mm. No, we know we are not following that. We know we are following the true God. True God. Since, since he could tell. That the Cyrus, by the time the prophecy was being made, Cyrus' grandfather had not been born. His great great grandfather had not been born. Great His great grandfather had not been born. Had not been born. And, and he named him. And he said he, he said all the things that he was going to he do through Cyrus. Yeah. Yes. So it is is a way of giving you confidence, reminding you the confidence that you have in the true God, that this is the true God indeed. Because he's the one that owns tomorrow, and he's the one that actually owns your tomorrow. So you can you can rest a little, you can sleep a little more easier tonight. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and I I always tell them, you know, when I'm trying to say this kind of thing, to tell you that our true God, people who know true God, people who know true God, they don't doubt him. When the Bible's enable. Chapter 11, verse 6 says that uh, without faith, you cannot please God. What he's saying is that if you, without you oh, understanding and resting in his words, you know, you need a total rest that what he has said is true. You cannot please him. In fact, if you cannot rest in his word, you are an enemy to God. That's basically. There's no need, no two ways, no two ways about it. If you can, if God says something and you say, ah, will this be? You have become an enemy to God. You know, straight away. There's no need we put it, put on anything. And you remember David, who know God, said, even though I walk through the valley of shadow of death, I shall fear no evil, for I know you are with me. Those are the people who stand, who understand. And uh, Paul was not uh, just opening his mouth and closing it when he said that I may know you. And the ultimate is for us to understand, to know God. We cannot know him totally, but at least if God has said something, we must rest on what. He has said. We must stress on what he has said. Right. Ooh, oh. Uh, sister. Are you okay? Sister Layo. I've come to you now. Jeremiah 29 11. 